In this video, we'll see how we can get to know the latest version of firmware for the Siemens Ciprotec 5 model IEDs. So, how to download them and update it from the Dixie 5 um, software application. So, it's highly recommended to use a latest version of Dixie um, configuration tool for the Siemens Ciprotec 5 model IEDs. Uh, in my case, I have installed the, the latest version at the moment is version 9.30, including the hotfix one. And next, how we can get to know the ID firmware version for the IDs and communication modules. Let's expand the, the ID. Depending on the project um, that you have on your PC uh, on the substation or the small setup, you may have uh, more than one ID. In my case, I have one physical ID, one offline ID, which I don't, I don't have it physically, um, just to using the 6MU85 as a merging unit um, configuration to publish the sample value in the configuration and I have subscribed the sample value which has been configured in the 6MU85 to the 7086 um, for a small um, application testing in this case. To know the IP address, um, you can easily double click the um, hardware and protocol. So, this is access point which I have connected to my PC. I have um, assigned already the static IP address, which is uh, 192.168.10.122, which I have uh, an access already by expanding the um, load firmware onto the devices or double click we can get to know the the version which i have currently installed on my pc so can you able to just refresh in case if you don't see the currently installed version um, in my case uh, i have a small setup in the office i don't configure the, um, the user credential often to make uh, my job easier but in case if you have uh, user details in a real project it's highly recommended to um, make it more secure with a different possibility of the, the configuration of the secure username and password to access the, the devices so i have um, version 8.83 um, installed on the id and, and scheduled version we could see the uh, 9.30 for the communication modules which is a protocol device drivers uh, have already installed but for the 7086 uh, the transformer differential protection control automation ID um, device driver is not updated on my PC which need to be updated so that I can make the device to the latest version so we can go to uh, the latest device driver so you can go to the um, Siemens web page so I can get the link in the description so you have the account in the Siemens um, support line So let me log in to make sure that I could be able to download the information easily. So here we can able to download many different information including the latest version of ID configuration tool and the system configuration also to also part of the, the package. You can also download it standalone which is IEC 620 configuration tool so select uh, the one of the, um, the part to, to reach the latest version of uh, the XFI ID configuration tool package so here we could see the 9.30 hotfix one so in case if you don't have the latest version you can download the complete um, installer in a zip file and you can able to start installing it and upgrade to the latest version by taking the backup of your existing project exporting it and you can bring back those um, project file into the latest version later on 
so in our case we need the device driver so we scroll down a little bit and we can see the complete package of the say protect 5 uh, model device drivers in my case i have one single id physically in my network i can just download the, the specific um, id model the device driver so here i go in case if you want to download the whole package which is around 3.7 gb for the latest version you can able to easily download at this level let's go to the associate products and in the right side if i scroll down i could see the 7 ut86 the specific ied make and if i scroll down there i see the device drivers for the transformer differential protection id so here i can able to see the the firmware for the 9.30 uh, version so i can just download from this level it's the 84 mb so i need to accept the terms and condition okay and the protocol uh, driver um, also separate which has been downloaded and installed already you can also double check by downloading it treat import together and see the update it's also important to check the release notes uh, what are the fixes part of this new release HTML file and uh, 9.30 is applicable for um, uh, different product type part of the Ciprotec 5 family um, including the communication protocol device driver and there are many different specific ID model and most of the models are supported from the Ciprotec 5 family for the latest firmware and mainly the communication related enhancement part of the newer version which I am really interested in to get into my setup on the id so i'm good to go here but it's also important to um, check what are the enhancements that are going to happen after you update it so it's not uh, recommended to update in the real project in the live substation better to update in the small setup um, even if you are a utility or the system integrator better to update uh, the same model id uh, to the latest version and check whether functionalities are working as expected in small setup then implement in the real project so these are the new feature announcement part of the newer version that you can also get to know and there is a manual basically the guideline how to update the firmware that you can also get to know here So to know the installation guideline, um, how we can proceed with the firmware update, you can select the installation remark. There you can see a procedure, step-by-step -step method, how to update the firmware, what are the requirements that we need to follow. So here we have the PDF file, which you can download locally. So this is a guideline to update the firmware for the Ciprotec 5 model IDs. The first point is we need to download the latest uh, device drivers for the specific model ID. And if you have more than one ID model in your uh, project, you can download the whole package. And the protocol firmware also important to get their enhancement related to the communication protocols. So here we go, uh, the options, step one, step two, step three which is basically the downloading this, the device driver which have, we have um, done already then importing it to the dixie file uh, which we'll be doing it and then further we can go to the manage device driver to see what are the different um, firmware and configuration which we have uh, already in our setup which is also another nice option we can load the firmware further 
so these are the steps let's do it in real let's go to the Dixie 5 ID configuration tool close this tool don't need this one as well let's go to the tools menu there we see the import device driver option so the device driver which we have downloaded is here the 9.30 version for a specific model including the communication protocol driver so I don't need to import 7UT82, 7UT85 I just only need 7UT86 device driver and I have already the latest version of protocol device driver imported in case if you don't have and you can enable, enable it and by default it will get enabled you can just import it so the device driver contains the firmware um, and the other packages that is required to build the configuration for a specific model ID to associate the ID with the supporting software that is required to communicate and configure the, the ID to manage. It will install the resource files into the default directory where we have installed the Dixie file. Depending on the performance of your PC, and the importing of device driver takes few minutes. Meantime, I can also show you the connection that we have uh, that we can make from the web browser. You can also enable the web browser for a specific um, ID. And if you have a configured username and password, you need to provide the credential. I don't know the username and password. In a small setup so let's go to the separate tech 5 to know the the version details of the separate tech 5 id you can see the model number the serial number part number to the firmware version for the id You can also download the firmware for many number of IDs um, in one shot. You can also update the configuration version to the latest version. So this is a this is a nice example how you can able to do it um, step by step. And further, you can uh, download the configuration to the real ID once you upgrade the project to the latest version. So the device driver has been successfully um, imported to the Dixie 5 software application. We could see the successful message. 
as a status and we can say okay uh, the dixie 5 uh, software id configuration tool is to close and open to make sure the the imported device drivers are properly loaded into the software application to be used for various application purpose So we can open the project file. It's the project file also getting open. So the project has been opened so you can see the the manage device driver under the tools menu there we can see the installed device driver for the the different model ids including the protocol device driver so here we can see the latest version of device driver is 9.30 and including for the protocol communication module device driver so let's go to the load firmware to the devices option in the project I don't need to select the offline ID I just need to expand the online ID here I see the, the firmware version which we have currently installed on the ID you can also do refresh to make sure that the informations are read from the ID to the DXC5 software configuration tool. So the schedule version should be same. So here I can see an option here for the firmware to the to the ID. The modules already updated to the latest version in the selection. We can flexibly select which version to be updated and we should have the consistent version um, on the ID including the communication module because we have the latest version available um, to get the maximum benefit so let's select the update device option and have already taken the project backup that's okay and it's better to do in the id when it is not energized and make sure that you already tested on the configuration that you're going to load um, into the real project so that everything works. And you also read the, the firmware update guide and what are the announcements that are going to happen so that you don't get a um, surprise after you update the firmware with new different functions. The firmware is now transferring from the Dixie 5 configuration tool to the real ID the firmware can be updated um, from the front port USB cable to the rear port the most important point is the the safety and security menu there you can manage the access control for the specific access point where we can able to have both read and write access. You can able to flexibly manage from each access point. You can able to manage the firmware update for Siemens Protect 5 model IDs.
Okay, we can close the connection that we made from the web browser. So the firmware has been transferred successfully almost and then we are trying to retrieve the, the detail from the ID to the Dixie. So the device gets um, the restart before the update, post update. It also check the consistency and other information related to the signature of the firmware that we have been loaded to the device to make sure the the right firmware which is signed by Siemens has been uploaded to the device. This is to make sure the integrity validation is done. First updating the firmware of a specific device.
So the firmware has been successfully loaded to the device from the Dixie file configuration tool. And we do see the status information is also OK here. We can say OK at the moment. And we also see the, the history in the down what exactly happened um, by connecting which port from the Dixie, what are the different firmware loaded for the main CPU board, so the communication modules for the Ethernet and fiber optic modules to load the communication firmware, protocol firmware. Next, upgrade project devices. Just double click the option. Now we should see the configuration versions. For the ID. So now we can see the configuration version for this single ID. We can update and we can also update the, the merging unit as well, which I can do it later. I can just upgrade the project version, the configuration version from 8.83 to 9.30. So I select only single ID at the moment. I can go for the upgrade device option, which is basically an offline process. The configuration of the the project version will be upgraded from the lower version to the higher version. So we have a complete flexibility on which ID that we're going to work and upgrade the project. And you can also do the upgrade of the project for the whole um, number of IDs, which is also highly recommended for the similar FEM product type. And there is a requirement to update it. upgrading the configuration version also take few minutes depending on the PC performance the project size that you have on your PC Upgrading of the configuration in offline is almost going to complete. Once it is upgraded, the configuration version of the latest one can be downloaded to the real ID. configuration update is almost done. You should now get a message saying that the offline upgrade of the configuration version is completed. So we also get the inconsistency information, which we can see as a warning in the down. So upgrade is done, that's okay. And we can see here in the down.
we also need to update the information of the six month station. The update has been done here. So let's go to the six month station and you can double click further we can just export the information that we have upgraded uh, to the local project to so the 60 system configurator then we can bring back those information to the project so that the information of the configuration version changes also reflects in the 60 configuration System, system configuration tool. So it's just test three, but we have did already. The validation is happening. So the configuration has been exported to the 60 station. Let's quickly check the mapping of the sample value control block data attribute from the publisher to the subscriber. So here we have the publisher, which is a 6MU85. And we have the subscriber, 7UT86. And I have already mapped and everything is there. There is no change here. And there is no need to save. There is no much changes here. Let's close the project and we can just import the changes back. the project from the 60 station so here we have the single ID which is a sample value subscriber So the importing is done and there is one ghost control block which not has been subscribed to any other ID within the project so that's completely okay for us we have only LSVS is enabled then that's okay for us and we have all come from the inconsistency post upgrading the project then we also perform the inconsistency or consistency check in short for the whole project so that we are good to go to perform the right operation from the Dixie file to the real ID. See, our, we are okay here, there is no problem. And let's right click the 7UT86 ID load the configuration to the device and it's also important to manage the, the device setting which access point is used to communicate to the Dixie before we perform the command write which I have done already but anyway so we can able to manage the access point flexibly here that you have connected to the network to manage the the read-write access to communicate from the Dixie can expand the safety and security 
there you have the network access and security option to manage the specific access point for a different communication protocol whether you need to have provide the read access only or read write access or no access that you can manage here at this level so let's close this so we are good to go then we can just right click the ID perform the load configuration to device so we need to provide the password six times two this is the default password which I'm not which I'm using but you can change in your real project since Dixie is connected to the real ID and building the configuration now it's, it will start writing the configuration to the ID So the device configuration is transferring to the real ID. And the configuration has been loaded and we see the successful message in the status. And we can say OK here. And the device will go for the reboot. Meantime, we can just export the SCD file from the system configuration tool to quickly perform the check of um, the measurement and verification and the communications are really working as expected or not with a standardized testing tool from Omicron. So this is the 60 station which we have updated. You can just select the station menu. There we see an option to export to provide the path where we need to export. Otherwise, by default, it will be in desktop. You can export, expand the desktop, and go to the IDs in the CL file. And there will be an SCD file by default as a backup, but it's also okay to export. You can also replace the existing SCD file, which I have already exported. So the SCD file has been exported, um, then it will already get open here in the in the folder so let's open the device links software application before that we can quickly check the ID firmware version and the LDNS 128 210.122 this is our ID And there we go, the 7086, and here we see the latest firmware version for our ID, which is upgraded to the 
9.30 including the configuration version has been up to date let's go back to the main menu and come back here we have already exported the cd file and have cmc356 id code and ptp time server in my setup i can quickly run a test with test universe injecting the current and voltages in a sample value format so i can create a occ file which enables us to reuse the, the test document whenever we need it to perform quickly a check you can just double click the test object provide the information you can also open the id scout there you can able to discover the id with the ip address information also you can import the cl file you can go online to make sure the, the configurations are properly loaded and id scout is able to connect and enable the repos and subscribe the goose messages so i have an example of um, one goose control block and the goose control blocks are also having the data set connected having two different protection signal you can also have a sample data set which has been connected to the report control block under the 7ut86 id for measurement and protection signal so let me discover the the id object with the ip address on dot. 122 is the ID IP address. Make sure that you're selected the right uh, access point from the configuration tab. So by double clicking the device, we can fill the information related to the nameplate detail of the ID and the project details. And we can also get the benefit of um, the PhD logical node from the discovered ID to get the latest information from the ID using the ID scout. So let's expand it, expand the data model. There you can enable the description to get many different information. Expand the application, select the LPHD logical node under the nameplate data object sorry the physical name data object you get many different information that is required for example the manufacturer name or the vendor name is uh, Siemens you can copy the information here and paste it here in the manufacturer section and the test object name which is a uh, ID name you can also select the model number you can provide the details here the device type also same the device address is basically an IP address you can get those property here by selecting this field you can copy for the legacy devices, the device address will be in numbers. The serial number also can be captured um, from the nameplate data. You can select copy. Come back here and provide the serial number. And the CT and VT ratio can be gettable from the power system menu in the Dixie file. So there you can see this is the measurement point which has been used for subscribing the sample value and we can get the CT and VT ratio here. So the CT ratio is 1000 bar 1 which is based on the 9-2 protocol, sample value protocol. 
for the VT ratio we have uh, 400 kV bar 100 volt so these are the settings which I can provide here 400 kV and 100 volt in the secondary and 1000 bar 1 in the CT ratio from primary to nominal voltage and current so I can apply here and say OK here and double click the hardware configuration which is very important to configure the sample value information when we wanted to use the CMC as a merging unit so we disable the physical analog outputs instead we use the sample value option to publish the current and voltages so I can select one current and one voltage for this example which is sufficient to test so you can stop the body file will be in stop state and you can just import the SCL file so we have already exported the SCL file which we have here just exported we can import it here it's automatically the test universe has the intelligence to pick only the sample value control block contains ID and we can choose the, the merging unit information simulation box can be unchecked this is a test setup and Ethernet one is access point where I have connected the CMC 356 I can go to the stream one in the um, sample rate and the SD is automatically selected which is part of the SCL file definition otherwise you can able to configure it flexibly at this level in case if it is not configured automatically so go to the data set mapping which is very important as a second step so we need to map the CMC channels to the sample value control block data attribute that we have imported from the configuration definition so that when we use the CMC channels it will be published as a merging unit configuration that we have imported we can also use the optional fill to perform the additional checks which is fine here then the time source is very important to synchronize the test set and the ID and the test to one common time source so utility profile is used because I also have the OTMC and LP in my setup it's also configured um, to be used as a power utility profile so go to the configuration there you see the PTP configuration so at the moment the time service configured to be used as a utility profile for PTP term synchronization method so we are good to go the configuration is okay next is um, the test module for example this use case I'll use QuickCMC you can also may use many different test modules to perform advanced protection testing and basic protection testing also 640 application testing as well just double click the QuickCMC and where you can able to see the channels and you can also customize the current and voltage injection and ramp those values so let's save the document you can also save the document as a project and you can able to reuse those documents like 7UT86 then you can press home then start continue the sequence that we have applied after you discover you see the the definition that has been configured automatically came into the ID code and you can also see uh, an option where you can able to easily subscribe the goose message um, to the ID code so that you can easily come to know okay so the real ID that we have updated to the latest firmware and upgraded the configuration which we have loaded to the real ID is 
really working fine related to the communication for goose messages and id is quite able to subscribe those goose messages even you can able to understand that better from the sniffer what exactly going in the backend the configured informations are really um, getting out from the recently updated id so all these checks you can able to perform very well you can able to use the advanced filtering for a specific id the goose messages you can also monitor the retransmission of the goose message as per the configuration that you define in the project in the security system configured is really happening or not in the network that you can also check you can also uncheck the retransmission to make sure only you observe the the data change and where it happens in the goose control block and next we also go to the report control block there you can see the the data set which has been connected to the report control block so there are two different data set which i have used so here i do see one of the data set contains uh, the measurement value i can able to select that which has been not enabled by someone the network i can enable it so i discovered here going to be used as a client application to the 670 server so here i do see uh, there is no data change at the moment i can also just disable the polling to only know the report is only used to monitor the value here for an example then i can go to the quick cmc can right click and apply the 50% of the load I can start injecting the current and voltages before that i can show you the the measurement values from the transformer side to here where we are monitoring the, the sample value measurement that has been connected to the transformer to side which i am subscribing from the the configuration of the 6MU offline ID that has been imported into the CMC. So here we get no current and no voltage. After I start injecting the current and voltages, we could see the the real current and voltages which has been published by the CMC. So here we do see the the voltage information. So this is a different information that we have observed next we can go to the id code so here also we do see the the actual current and voltages so those are the 400 kv and then we also see the current definition which is a 0.5 in the secondary 500 ampere which we can able to monitor and the report also received and we can also able to get those report information here which report has been received by id scott for the data change that happened you can also monitor you can also export the information as a test report that you verified all this information so this is how we can make sure the configuration is really working fine post updating the the information so now we are monitoring in the secondary you can go to the primary side so here we can see the the phase to neutral voltage phase to phase voltage for the voltage information and the current information the primary side also the, the active power reactive power also the power factor frequency information so that's all in this video Yes, if you need more information or if you're testing sample value application, you can always feel free to reach Omicron technical support. Uh, depending on your location, you can be able to contact the right technical support. And we will be happy to support you. So here you can be able to see the different technical support email line. You can ramp the value and you can also perform advanced testing by changing the value and using the dedicated test module you can exit 
and pin also. Stop the sample value from the hardware configuration test module once you completed the testing.